we have <clears throat> Twenty-eight people. Okay, maybe because this link issue, um, we have people joining a bit slowly, so we give some, we give them a little bit of time. Yeah. So let me just link in the notes as well. Okay, I think we better start, otherwise we might not reach the end of this <laughs> spreadsheet. Okay, for everybody who's here already, uh, thanks so much. Sorry about the bit of confusion there with the link. It seems that Zoom has chosen today or yesterday to update and it's caused a couple of problems for us here in terms of uh, getting people in and making sure they have the right link. Uh, maybe just nice to mention related to, to that point, uh, I think link Zoom has updated with something related to, to privacy and data protection, just so that everybody knows we will be recording the meeting today and um, uh, anything that's said in the meeting and the chat will be used as, as raw data to go towards a report from the workshop that will be used, but it will be anonymized and then the raw data will be, will be deleted once that process has happened. So, you know, any kind of sensitive personal data won't be, won't be kept. Um, okay, so what are we going to do today in the meeting? Basically, uh, within the next two minutes, finish off this uh, meeting setup. Then we'll take 30 minutes to go through the priority recommendations from pillar one of turning fair into reality. So more or less 10 minutes for each of the recommendations, one, two, and three. And the idea is that um, I'm going to just give a, a brief overview of um, what, what each of the recommendations are about just so that it's top of mind for people. And then I'd like us to take a look at the spreadsheet and what people have filled in. And ideally, if people are willing to kind of speak up a little bit and mention the, the ongoing things that they're aware of or that are planned um, related to their own projects, but also related to any other kind of projects um, and any other work that, that touches on that recommendation that's going on that they're aware of. Uh, so it doesn't have to be related to Fair is Fair and it doesn't have to be related to the project for the, the hat you're wearing today either. Following on from that, we'll take about 10 minutes to look at the other uh, two recommendations, 16 and 17, which are linked to pillar one, but they're the non-priority recommendations. Then there are two questions that we're going to look at about um, which kind of things might be missing from the pillar and, and which kind of things haven't been covered or where the gaps are in terms of what needs to be done. And at the end, we'll just have a, a wrap up if we still have some time then as well. Okay, so I'm gonna come down here to the next page. So you should, normally in the notes, actually, you should be able to see um, that there's a link for the session presentation. So the presentation I'm giving today, actually, you can follow it on your own, hopefully. Uh, it should be able to be accessed by anybody. They're also both in the notes file and in this uh, spreadsheet, the, the other links you need. So for the, um, this presentation, for the Turning Fair into Reality report, for the collaborative notes. Um, and again, just to mention, today we are taking collaborative notes. So both in terms of things you have to share in the spreadsheet, but also um, in the Google Doc, anything that you feel might be uh, useful to note for us later, just add it in there. You can add it in as a comment, suggestion, or just feel free to, to write anything in as well. Okay, so if we come here to, um, to pillar one already, just as a quick introduction, um, turning fair into reality, of course, we all know there are six pillars. Today, we're looking at pillar one, even though this is the third session in the series. This pillar is related to the core concepts. So there are a few things I've pulled out that are interesting for us to talk about. For example, um, how the fair principles apply in the context of research communities. So this idea of what FAIR really means for different communities that are involved. Um, 
Another point related to this defining stage, pillar one, is about the additional concepts and policies that are needed to be uh, defined as part of uh, this phase. And then also the relationship between fair and open. So I just pulled out this quote here, as open as possible, as close as necessary. So there's a lot of things that need to happen in terms of policy to, to reach that stage. And there are kind of two focuses um, as such, according to turning fair into reality report, uh, two work streams that go in this direction. One of them is related to the fair digital object. So defining what's needed for digital objects to be made fair. And the other one is on the fair ecosystem. So defining which components are needed in the fair ecosystem. So, so what are all of the things that are in there? Okay, so now that we know a little bit why we're here, <laughs> maybe it's good for me to stop talking for a minute. Um, I'm not sure how many of us there are in here, but um, presumably more than a few. So I'd prefer to avoid going one by one um, with this kind of introduction round, because I think they can drag out a little bit. But maybe it's nice for anybody who hasn't attended one of these breakout sessions so far, if you'd like to have the opportunity to just introduce yourself and say hello and maybe say why you're here. So I don't know if I have the possibility of seeing when people raise their hand or if they have the option to do that. But if you wanted to write it, maybe a plus one in the comment box, I could just invite you to introduce yourself if, if you wish um, to present myself, which I forgot to do in the beginning. Uh, I'm Jerry, I work in the Fairs Fair project um, at Dance, and I work in Work Package 1 and also Work Package 2, so the technical work package. And I'm also involved in the ESC Energy project, also in the technical work package, uh, Work Package 3. I'm not seeing anybody commenting here in the Zoom chat to say that they're interested in presenting themselves. Um, surely there's somebody in there who hasn't had a chance to attend one of these breakout sessions yet. Okay, Neil, let's see where you are. If you, do you want to just unmute yourself and say hello? Hi there, um, I'm Neil Chuhong. This is the first of the Fair's Fair um, sessions that I've attended. Um, I am part of the EOSC Fair Working Group, um, specifically I'm part of the group that's looking at fair and practice. Great. Thanks, Neil. Um, well, welcome to the session. Anybody else? Okay. Hello. Yep. This is Eli Papadopoulou. Uh, you can hear me, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Hi. So uh, I am involved in the, the National, National Institute for Open Science uh, Europe, NIFOS Europe project. And I'm here with my colleague Andreas of Theodoru. And we're working, so I'm involved mostly on work package two, which has to do with setting up the national initiatives and working with the different stakeholders uh, to, to influence um, uh, on, on strategic level and policy level uh, open and fair data management, uh, plus work package four, which has to do with um, uh, creating, building new tools uh, aligned with fair practices. So this is uh, why I'm very interested in this, uh, in this session. Perfect. How we could contribute, thank you. Okay. Okay, so I think we can, we can move on as well now to the, to the next part. So basically the idea of the session uh, today- Jerry, sorry, I see Vincian also raised the hand. From oh, the... perfect, okay, <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so uh, yeah, nice to, to meet you all. Um, I have seen some of you in uh, previous meetings. It's the, I think it's the third um, synchronization force um, workshop that I attend, maybe the second, sure. Um, so I'm working at EUA, the European University Association. Uh, EUA is a partner in uh, Fair Sphere, but it's my colleague Lennart, Lennart Stoy, who knows everything about that. Um, and uh, so we are working in the research and innovation unit of uh, the European University Association. And also it's, it may be interesting for you to know that um, EUA is also involved. Um, we, we, I'm, I'm actually co-chairing the working group on skills and training of the EOSC uh, executive board. This group started only a few weeks ago, so it's very new, uh, but we are, we are making good progress and uh, well, I hope we can, we can all work good together. But today I'm here more to take the temperature, let's see. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Hopefully it's warm, but not too warm. Um, 
Great. Any other hands raised then? Because Okay, we, we jump into it already then. Um, yeah, so looking at the, the different recommendations within this de defining pillar, we can see that there are five. So recommendation one, two, three, and then also the non-priority ones, 16 and 17. So if we start looking already at recommendation one, define fair for implementation, we can see that there are three actions related to this. Um, generally, this uh, this recommendation is related to um, incorporating and emphasizing the concepts that are Im implicit in, in uh, uh, making FAIR, um, in defining FAIR for, for implementation. So things like long-term data stewardship, ac accessibility, legal interoperability, and also the timeliness of sharing. And then these actions specifically are related to the additional concepts and policies that need to be refined um, uh, in order to do that. Um, making sure that uh, FAIR is widely used and effective um, and, and making sure that the idea of FAIR isn't kind of going in tangents and, and growing new branches. So that's kind of action to 1.2. And then the action 1.3 is, uh, as we just mentioned a couple of minutes ago, um, this definition of the relationship between open, openness and FAIR and making sure that it's clear how FAIR can um, be a partner to open data and also an important partner for for open science so at this point i think i would already like to maybe now go to the the spreadsheet and see which kind of comments and activities people have have written that they're engaged in related to this recommendation number one so um we have here for for fair's fair just kicking it off um some of the deliverables that fair's fair is involved in so uh, as you can imagine there are quite a few um, within work package three, we have work on recommendations for fair policy, but also fair practice, um, a transition support program or, or a recommendation, a uh, list of recommendations for um, how FAIR's FAIR is helping uh, repositories to transition and become ready for the EOSC. We can also see um, reports on FAIR requirements for persistence and interoperability. So the first one of those has already been published at the end of last year and an updated version should be coming this year and um, during the summer or towards the end of the summer. Um, and we can see that there are within the work package too, the, the technical work package, and um, there's already been published a first set of uh, criteria or requirements for uh, enabling FAIR in repositories. And uh, from the task on FAIR for software and services. There's a first framework for assessing the fairness of services. And there's been a webinar that touches on both of these points of uh, enabling FAIR and data repository, and also the fairification of services that took place a couple of weeks ago. So I think um, the, the, the DOI for that is there as well. Um, maybe we move on then from FAIR's FAIR and I let Francoise mentioned, uh, Francoise and also Neil mentioned what's happening with the FAIR working group. Uh, yes, maybe I can just say that it's part of a remit of a group and that uh, one of the important points is that we have a task force on FAIR practices of which Nietzsche. Neil is a, is a member, uh, which is examining the FAIR practices in a variety of disciplinary fields because uh, diversity is one of the key words in all the game we are playing here. Uh, they, they will write a report which will be available for consultation at the beginning of the summer. Mm -hmm. There is, I, I went through the, all the actions of recommendation ones to try to see the different aspects covered. So there is a plan to examine legal interoperability in the interoperability task force and uh, the metrics and certification task force task force is uh, is working on uh, is using and examining in particular the recommendations of the RDA fair data maturity model working group and also is in liaison with fair is fair work packages two and four so there is this open question of defining fair for other components of the ecosystem than data and uh, maybe Neil can say a word about a new uh, proposal for a new working group on research software. Yeah, um, thanks, Francoise. Um, so 
there has been work through a number of different avenues bringing together the people who have um, been doing work in fair for uh, software in different arenas and there was a virtual session held at the recent research data alliance um, so we have actually just earlier today submitted the case statement for the starting up of a working group on fair for research software which will be a joint uh, research data alliance force 11 and research software alliance working group where the discussions around this and what it means also for the practice of fair software um, and there are a lot of people who've already signed up from the community and i think i've, I've seen a number of people from um, fair's fair as well be part of that process so um, we'll be keeping people updated on the progress of that group as we start it going and start addressing some of the big challenges which i think are similar to the ones that have been coming up from the fairs fair uh, work around particularly what it means to be interoperable okay great hopefully also even just within this spreadsheet as well it might be possible for you to see other uh, projects that are working on similar similar points so feel free to have a good route around there and see what who else might you might be interested in getting in contact with okay if we jump to andreas then because the so already to column j uh, in ESC Nordic. Yes, hello. Um, yeah, we have a very broad um, uh, ambition to, to sort of help any kind of a repository in our region. Uh, and, um, and what we have done is to, we have simply chosen to evaluate uh, uh, during uh, various epochs uh, of the project, uh, the, um, the fair maturity using uh, Wilkinson's uh, uh, maturity evaluator. So we have done that for a first epoch now, and we'll do that with regular intervals until 2022 when the project ends, and then see how that evolves as we offer um, uh, hackathons and metadata for machine events to, to support the, uh, the communities, the repositories in the region to, uh, to verify their data. Okay, great. Um, if we move next to ES Pillar, I don't see the name of the person contributing for this. So. Um, is there somebody from EOS Pillar on the call? Yeah, Olivier Auchan here. Yeah. Um, I'm not directly contributing to the work package 5 in EOS Pillar. My colleague Lisana is uh, off this week. So I'll try to give you a quick um, summary of our activities uh, there. So basically, we are currently designing uh, um, some sort of a fair federated data space. Um, out of existing various uh, data repositories, we will in, try to uh, uh, investigate uh, which tools are in compliance with FAIR principles there, such as FAIR data point, CODRA, etc., etc. Um, everything that could be of use to manage FAIR digital objects at, at scale. So we will produce um, a set of uh, deliverables as part of this. Um, some of them will be reports, other will be on operations, other will be a recommendation, and that's pretty much it. Okay, sounds good. Um, if we move on to the, the other Andreas, then for NIFOS. Oh, hi, everybody. So, uh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. So, uh, our implementation of FAIR is according to the FAIR guiding principles for scientific data management and stewardship by Wilkinson. Um, all the um, related information um, about uh, the uptake of FAIR can be found in the deliverable B6.1 uh, called the OSC service and FAIR up uptake strategy, which can be found in, um, in this link I provide in the, in the spreadsheet. Now, regarding the, um, uh, the implementation of, uh, of FAIR, um, we have um, produced the deliverable B4.2, uh, Data Repository Integration and ORDM and FAIR Compliance Guidelines. So we provide guidelines and we're working on, I mean, in um, identifying um, um, uh, tools for, uh, uh, for the identification of, of the FAIR maturity of of repositories and certification schemes. Um, 
uh, and there will be more coming in the next um, in the next couple of months, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, perfect. Um, I'll move quickly on to expands as well. So I think that's me. It's Abigail McBurney here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So um, we're doing a few things in relation to recommendation one. Um, one of them is some work on a data policy. We're doing this in uh, uh, also with Panos, which is our sort of sister project. Um, essentially defining data policy for uh, photon and neutron research infrastructures, um, revising that so that it fits with EOSC policy and that it takes fair principles into account. Um, and the other, so we have a draft deliverable this year on that and then a final deliverable uh, the following year on that. Um, and the other thing we're doing in September, October is running a workshop for facility scientists um, on FAIR principles. So basically what is FAIR, um, what does that matter for implementation? What's the difference between open and FAIR? Many of these sorts of topics. Okay, and is there already some, some more information about that workshop? Is there an, an, an event page set up already or it's still too early? Uh, no, not yet. Um, I've been in liaising though with FAIR's FAIR actually on the Competence Center around this and various other things to see if we can pull out, for example, I think the, the code data, um, data stewardship training that school that happened. Um, we may be taking some of the, the, the concepts and potentially even the material from that to reuse. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. The, the next column is actually for me to comment on EOSC Synergy, but I thought it was a better fit, the work that's going on in EOSC Synergy under the next recommendation. So I'm going to quickly move on to Entry Fair to Maria. Yes, just found it and unmute button. Yes, hi, I'm Maria here. Uh, I, um, there's a lot of things in the Entry Fair that could be put here on the recommendation one. I actually put them on the other recommendation three and so on. But um, I added a uh, report here of a more general character of the um, REFER project, describing the overall ambitions and so on of the MBFAIR. But there are also other um, work packages and deliverables uh, that we already have uh, that could be related to the recommendation. For example, the one I put into the recommendation three uh, regarding um, um, uh, liberable on uh, a uh, survey on the maturity of fairness, but uh, we come to that. But um, yes, uh, that's about it <laughs> for the moment being. Thanks, Maria. That, yeah. that's, that's enough, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I, you mentioned that there are a lot of deliverables that are available, and thanks for sharing the doy here. Maybe something mm -hmm. that's interesting. I know for the Fair is Fair project, we have a, a project Zenodo. Um, mm -hmm. So as part of the open research data um, um, uh, pilot, we're making all of the deliverables available at the moment that they're being uh, sent to the, to the European Commission as well. Mm -hmm. if, if other projects also use similar kind of repositories um, where they're already published or preprints of, of deliverables, et cetera, are available, it would be great if you could uh, share those in the, the meeting notes as well. So if there are any kind of um, links to the overall repositories. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely for me. Uh, the I just heard recently that uh, Emery Fair is going to publish via Senodo from mm -hmm. now and then. So they will be there, their uh, deliverables and reports so on right. Senodo. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I'm going to okay. skip now to column or to um, Heike from Panosk. If Heike is there. Or if there's somebody else from Panosk willing to comment on this. No. Okay. I mean, I can comment very briefly. It's Abigail again. I can just basically say that their deliverable there is, is very similar. The 2.1 is essentially, they are basically ahead of us, a few months ahead of us. So they are producing a data policy. I think it's coming out actually in mid-May or by end of May. Mm -hmm. um, and that's then we'll pick that up in the expands project and continue that work. So there's a, bit, a, very, a lot of synergy between the two projects on that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, totally understandable. Um, is Isabel here also? There are some comments entered by the FAIR champions from uh, Isabel Bernal. No? 
and otherwise we we go already to the the second recommendation maybe it's nice before moving on to the second recommendation just to to consider and um, does anybody have any kind of uh, point that they'd like to mention that they just came to their mind while we're going through all of that information okay no no general comments then not yet um okay then just give me a second to go back to recommendation two. Yes, yeah, so recommendation two. This is about implementing a model for fair digital objects. So we can see some different um, different kind of actions related to this too. And this is really about looking at um, which kind of uh, metadata and which kind of elements are needed um, to be included to make a, a digital object fair. So we're thinking about things like provenance information, license information, PID, uh, and also um, all of these things related to what's fair enough. So community standards, uh, rich documentation, and um, which kind of things are uh, needed to facilitate interoperability and the reuse of objects. So we see here there's three actions related to this. Um, action 2.1, the universal use of appropriate PIDs for fair digital objects. Um, action 2.2, educational programs needed to raise awareness and understanding of the relevant standards, tools, um, that should be used related to capturing metadata and action 2.3 um, you know systems being refined and implemented for automatic checking to make sure that uh, PIDs are there accessible um, and and all of this kind of uh, metadata that's I think still in definition is, is available also as well um, if we come back then again to the recommendation two in the spreadsheet um, under fair is fair, it's, it's empty here. So I will leave it empty and move already on again to uh, Francois and uh, Neil to let us know about what's happening in the EOSC fair working group. Yes, I, I go here for the action. So for the first action, uh, there is a, a dedicated work on PID policies, which is developed with the architecture working group. And the second draft is available for consultation. And on action 2.3, uh, there is this point on automated compliance checks. Uh, I think that it's useful to remember that there are risks on that. And uh, so uh, to, to identify uh, one of the risks being that the automated compliance measurement has its own biases. So it's, uh, it's one of the things which have to be taken in, kept in mind. Uh, it, in which concerns digital objects, not simply data. I really think that there is more work needed on, on what digital objects are and how they behave and so on. And I know that there are people working on defining an RDA group to, to work on digital objects in the follow, as a follow-up in particular of what was done in the data fabric uh, working group in, uh, in RDA. Yeah, sure. I, I was already. I was also um, at the, that um, uh, birds of a feather uh, a virtual session as part of the RDA virtual plenary. So maybe in the notes we can put a link to which whichever kind of um, uh, outcome or next steps are coming from from that birds of a feather session. We can try and track it down. I I think it's useful to track down. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if there is something public, but uh, I think that they have. Uh, as a follow-up of above, they have meetings and so on. And so I guess there will be a proposal for a working group at one point or to reshuffle uh, an existing group. Sure. Um, also, just related to the second draft of the PIC, PID policy document, um, I'm not sure if it's, if it's uh, the intention that it will be so widely shared that you can share the link here and that this is the kind of forum that you're looking for people to, to feed back on. So I, I tried to put links in, in the spreadsheet and I had problems because uh, they were not behaving properly. It's the only reason for which there is no links. Okay, no problem. If you can add them into the notes, then that would be great. It's not to, the idea is certainly not to hide anything. It's the contrary. That's why I am here. No, no problem. So to listen. That's great. Thank, thanks so much for that. Okay, and we'll, we'll jump again to um, Andreas Janssen from EOSC Nordic. Yes, um, well, we, we are implementing this uh, indirectly by using this uh, evaluator by Mark Wilkinson, as I mentioned, 
um, and that follows basically the um, you know that uh, a, a digital object should have a PID and there should be explicit identifiers within the metadata to point to the metadata and the uh, and the data and, and that's we have there are indicators identi uh, indicators that uh, test this okay great um, I'll come back to Olivier then as well for Pillar. Well, I, I haven't got much to add to what I, I said earlier. We are in the, in the in a preparatory phase at the moment. So. Okay, uh, maybe just uh, thinking thinking back on what you did say earlier. So you mentioned you're kind of testing a number of approaches, and one of them is, is Cordra. Is the idea then to have a deliverable or make something public about which were the strengths and weaknesses in, in comparison of those approaches, or uh, it's more just a pilot kind of? A... Uh, at this stage, I don't know if, if this will, the, the report or the deliverable will be a comparison between the two tools or just the, well, just the, the, the way we implemented the one that we chose. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's still not a bit unclear at the moment because I mentioned uh, Fair Data Point and mentioned Cordra, but there could be a, a third one. Uh, sure, of course. In the I think just to link it back to the point of Francoise as well, I suppose it, it also depends on what, what all of these different projects, including Fair is Fair, take as a kind of a baseline or a starting point um, in terms of, of how far they consider different approaches are, are uh, working or successful. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's something that we should all kind of come together and think about as well in, in another exactly. Uh, forum. Exactly. Um, I'll move forward to Andreas then for Nifos again. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so we have a particular task of work package for working on this. Uh, with the task software and fair data in practice, tools for RDM following the data lifecycle, and it's focusing on this recommendation. And this will lead to the deliverable D4.4, delivery of data management certification tools, which is expected um, to be delivered by July 2020. And it will contain an IPR tool for digital objects. Uh, in addition, we also have uh, um, Word Package 5 is working on a BI. PID policy, and that's uh, th that's all from uh, from Nifos. Sure. Um, so just a, a kind of a comment and a question. You mentioned here that there's a, a tool being developed, a, a demonstrator. And one thing that we're trying to work on at the moment with Fair is Fair is that any work development work that's happening that we would fork from existing GitHub repositories wherever they might be. Uh, into an, a, a more open fair is fair um, GitHub uh, environment to make sure that also anything that's developed in terms of reach, research output can have proper um, stewardship both for data and software. Um, but I think this might be also something that would be helpful to share in the notes for any of the projects that are doing any kind of development work if you're working in GitHub repositories to, to share those links as well so that people can go on and look at the code uh, at the source basically of, of where teams are working on it. I think um, that could help to bring us further in terms of being a bit more uh, pragmatic in terms of what's really going on. Um, okay, I skip now to expands. Um, okay, so we are doing, there's a couple things we're doing here. I think the really a key one that we're doing, which will then be implemented in Work Package 3 and Work Package 4. Work Package 3 is around data catalogs, Work Package 4 is around data um, analysis services. But in Work Package 2, we're trying to put together a model of the sort of the experimental life cycle that goes on in these facilities, everything from the proposal straight through to um, the eventual publication of the results. And we're trying to look at what metadata is available at each stage of this life cycle. Um, what does bits of that metadata need to be captured for FAIR um, which, and which are not relevant for FAIR. And then we're taking that a step further to actually, once we have the sort of generic model to then go and recommend, for example, certain persistent identifiers, maybe even certain metadata standards, um, that kind of thing. So that work, we have a draft uh, this year in August. And then we have a final one of the recommendations in about 18 months later, I believe, something like that. Yeah, February 22. So that's one aspect. Um, the other thing we're doing is looking at the use of persistent identifiers in photon and neutron research infrastructures. 
um, encouraging their use, encouraging people to, to use these, but also we're working with Freya, the project, to look at where there might be an opportunity to, to come up with some new persistent identifiers. For example, in our community, it'd be really useful to have them for the instruments at the facilities um, or for things like samples or software. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the activities we're doing in this area around the model of FAIR yeah. projects. So maybe it's interesting to mention that um, at the last EOSC consultation event in November in Budapest, there were discussions about the need for um, an interest group related to common catalogs, because this point that you make about needing PIDs for instruments or being able to, to um, uh, catalog and index instruments as well um, and, and have a good classification of them as part of, you know, um, a good documentation and recording as, as well of uh, the type of data and, and experimentation in, in a photon and neutron science. I think this is kind of a wider point on the need of common catalogs across all kinds of things of software services, data repositories um, uh, um, across the wider EOSC um, uh, network. So maybe I can also try and dig out any kind of uh, links there might be for, for where that work has moved forward. I'm not really aware of it, but um, potentially somebody from the EOS Secretariat could point us in the right direction as well. Yes, that would be helpful. I mean, the other thing I should mention as well about the, the first bit about the data lifecycle is that we're trying to make sure that we, obviously that would include things like the provenance metadata as well and preservation metadata. So not just the descriptive metadata of the actual experiment, but also the administrative and the structural metadata that you really need to be able to understand it if you want to reuse it, for example, or that kind of thing for FAIR. Yeah, yeah, great. I think it's it's also um, linked very closely to the point on what's considered fair enough. I think specifically for your domain, the, this idea of data sharing, it's not so much uh, important as maybe data transfer, etc. Well, and the analysis step is particularly tricky because I think we're actually, to be realistic, we're aiming for fair when it leaves the facility <laughs> mm -hmm. because it's hard we can control a certain amount in the facility, but once a user takes it back to their home institution to do some further analysis, we're then entirely dependent on the user adding that metadata that's needed to make that mm -hmm. data fair. And obviously that depends a lot on educating the users. Yeah, I think um, th this point on the distributed uh, role of metadata and seeing what part of it could be automatically generated, what should be added by the creator, a data steward, front office, back office, um, instead of saying that there's a minimum metadata criteria of 100 fields, we could say that it's split between different touch points and each, each touch point is going to add, you know, five, five or 10 pieces maybe. Um, okay, so here I'll mention what's happening on the EOSC Synergy project. So coming to column N now. Um, so the idea in, on EOSC Synergy is that um, because the focus, project focuses heavily on uh, software and services and expanding the network of uh, service providers that are um, uh, contributing to the EOSC. Also, these service providers uh, work with uh, repositories uh, for storing their data and also, uh, of course, like we just mentioned a minute ago, for experimentation and, and, and data transfer. And the idea uh, for EOSC Synergy in the project is to look at what's actually happening in FAIR's FAIR and which kind of uh, demonstrator tools are being produced from FAIR's FAIR or in, from other projects as well and see how they could be implemented directly with the, the partners in the project, uh, so the service providers. So there should be a first uh, intermediate report on that work um, going towards the end of this year, uh, due at, well, at the end of summer, and then another one, uh, the final report due in November 2021. And if we move forward, um, I don't know, uh, Abigail, if you wanted to mention also for Panosk or if you'd prefer if we just skip over that for now. I'm not quite sure what they're doing in this area, to be honest. Okay. I, I'm sure they are doing something though. <laughs> yeah, and we know from earlier that Isabel isn't there as well. So I think for recommendation two, um, maybe we could, could almost leave it at that. I'll just open it up again a little bit for people to, to see if now that they've heard the, the comments of those on the call, if they have some other comments that they'd like to make about this recommendation on, on a model for fair digital objects. No. I'm a bit surprised that um, nobody has picked up on Action 2.2. Educational programs are needed to raise awareness because I know that uh, training and skills is something that 
uh, everyone is touching across, but maybe because of the more technical focus of this um, of this pillar, we we've missed some of the training and and skills people from this call. One of the comments on training we got is in particular about the usage of semantics, which has to do with a comment on uh, from. Uh, uh, expands on uh, users are not so expert when they have to develop to to choose metadata. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, uh, there's uh, work being done, of course, by fair fair in terms of fair semantics for seeing um, how we could uh, have better guidelines for um, ontologists and data stewards for uh, yeah. Yes, in that case, it's rather the usage of the semantics when it exists. Mm -hmm. So hands on what does, what how to use all that and what uh, so it's not so much about how to manipulate fair semantics uh, to make semantics fair let's say it's about what to do when you are in front of something and you have to to put metadata somewhere yeah okay I think what, one thing um, I just wanted to flag up sorry this is Joy Davidson uh, from Fair is Fair I, I don't know if we have anybody from Envy Fair on the call, but I, I did want to flag up that they have done some training um, on particularly mm -hmm. that, that aspect that you mentioned. So there is some materials coming out on how yeah. to uh, put, put that into practice. So I don't, is Maria on the call? Or? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's raised Hi. her hand yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I was just about to, to mention that uh, we had. Um, uh, one uh, training opportunity, one training webinar on uh, ontologies and interoperability within this Envy Fair, and um, we are also developing a kind of an um, uh, training catalog. Well, a catalog of training material for the Envy Fair. So I um, I can put this into the, this box. I didn't, yeah, uh, to the recommendation two box as well as this kind of ongoing work related to training, of course. Yes, yeah. there is also training in, uh, in the escape cluster. I think Mark Allen will write something. There is both something towards the producers of the data in the large infrastructures and towards the users of the data in the framework of a interdisciplinary interoperability framework which is the virtual observatory. But I guess Mark will put comments in the, in the column. Uh, if I may comment, or, um, yeah, sure, Peter. So uh, regarding NIFOS, we uh, we have the concept of uh, well, we, actually there is a training um, which has been going on for I mean for the cup I mean for the last three months. So all the material and the webinars can be found on the main web page of NIFOS. I can also provide a link. So we also have like um, we also have training material for trainers so that people that will train, I mean, uh, on how to, to, fair, to, make, to make fair your data, make fair your repositories on PIDs, I mean, on several topics which are related to this. So uh, I didn't mention that in the box, so I will, I, will, I will add that on the box, okay? Okay, great. I think um, we're definitely running out of time. So I'm gonna swiftly move on also again to recommendation three. Uh, so this one is about developing the components of a fair ecosystem and um, in terms of the actions we have 3.1 so the the need for registries to develop to mention all of these fair uh, components so here it mentions about registries um, and what we've discussed a couple of times even just in a, a couple of seconds ago about catalogs and common catalogs so there are kind of different words that we might use around this but i think that's an important thing to pick up here uh, action 3.2, um, so um, the need for a kind of human machine interaction. Uh, for, for me, this idea of human machine interaction is, is very important in terms of metadata, what can be automatically generated uh, um, uh, versus what we need to, to rely on a human to add or curate. Um, but also it mentions here about policies and data management plans being machine readable and actionable. Um, and then in terms of action three, the infrastructure components, essential, um, in specific contexts and fields. So I think we, we've also touched on those a little bit in terms of maybe a photon and neutron science, but um, maybe for some of the other uh, domains represented today, uh, we, we might want to make sure that we're capturing information about that too. Um, 
Okay, I'll jump quickly back to the spreadsheet again. Maybe it's nice if I try and give the floor to somebody else from Ferris Fair to mention about what we're doing in terms of recommendation three. I don't know if um, maybe Jessica is there. No? Okay, maybe it would be quicker if I, well, I, actually, um, I think uh, I, good. Okay, I could say on. something about, about the policy recommendations. Um, sure, okay. That's it. So just very quickly to pick up um, some of the policy enhancement recommendations are trying to pick up on that sort of notion of machine readability and the need for policies to do this. And, and we have had some early discussions with Susanna and her team um, at Fair Sharing. Um, mm -hmm. And certainly that is something that we'd be keen to pick up on more collaboratively if, if anybody else is also thinking in similar directions. Okay, perfect. I think hopefully Susanna can comment on that work as well. But if it's okay, Susanna, I'll wait until we get to the, the end of the co column and, and invite Francoise and, uh, and uh, Neil to comment again for the FAIR working group. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, uh, for the interoperability uh, task force, they, they are working on with the architecture group on the EOSC interoperability framework, and this includes discussion of technical, semantic, organizational, and legal interoperability. Mm -hmm. So this, I think, has to be kept in mind. Uh, there will be a draft which is nearly ready, to, which will be made available soon. So there is, again, this PID policy thing, and uh, the fact that metrics and certification uh, task force examines certification of uh, machine of uh, fair enabling services broader uh, in a broader way than just uh, repositories and uh, i agree that there is more work to do on registries and the need of test beds uh, which is in the in the tifr document in action 3.4 is extremely important Mm -hmm. Because it's clear that uh, nothing should be frozen, and in particular, when there is a beginning of a system, uh, there is a need to, to, to get feedback from implementation and to take the feedback into account. Okay, great. Um, okay, if we move to um, Jost Nordic again, then. Yes, um, yeah, again, um, <clears throat> uh, the maturity evaluator is a is a fundamental tool for us to sort of monitor the the um, uh, maturity of uh, of um, repositories in the region and tracing this throughout the project period uh, and supporting it uh, uh, supporting the verification of of, uh, of of those data repositories uh, through uh, various events and the, the focus is implicitly then also uh, uh, highly on machine actionability uh, machine actionable metadata. Okay, I, I notice when I see this, um, the comment you have here using the terminology, even M4M and hackathons, that it uh, seems at least in my opinion to overlap on some of the um, kind of topics and work that I've seen coming from GoFair. Are you working closely with GoFair? Or are you aware of the uh, different work that they're doing in this area as well? Yeah, this, uh, I didn't mention it, but yes, uh, we are working with, they are actually a partner, uh, one of the, partners in the in the work package oh perfect okay uh, so that's uh, the reason for that okay great. I, also, I did mention uh, but I added to the text for the previous points that uh, the recommendation uh, that we are also doing training we have trained more than 100 uh, uh, data stewards um, also through a GoFair course in the Nordic region okay perfect thanks Andreas I skip to the other Andreas from NIFOS now so actually, uh, this task is covered in two deliverables, um, uh, which are listed there. Um, yeah, uh, so we are also working on a fair maturity evaluator. Um, uh, and I will, I will provide more information about this uh, uh, today, poss possibly. Uh, okay. okay, perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Andreas. Um, Abigail, would you like to mention about Expand? Um, so what we're doing in Expands, and this is also actually happening in Panos, because obviously we're working in collaboration with them on this uh, task as well, is around data management plans. And we're looking at what we can populate automatically 
Um, so drawing from the proposal and the instrument selection and that kind of thing. And this also ties in with the work that we're doing for recommendation two around the, the experimental life cycle. Again, the idea is to make these data management plans active so that they follow the user as they travel through that life cycle. Um, so we have to sort of two aspects of this task. One is to come up with the template and that will be very much with PANOSC. Um, and then the second one is actually around trialing that and making it active and mm -hmm. seeing what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, I think um, uh, that, that's really interesting as well. I, I like that we're starting to see different sort of um, automated tools for helping researchers come through from this discussion as well. So uh, uh, maybe for everybody else who's on the call, if after the call you can think of any of these human machine touch points um, that your project is working on to try and highlight those in the notes or in the uh, spreadsheet as well, that would be great. Um, in terms of EOSC Synergy, I've mentioned here about um, best practices for elicitation, including data management planning. Uh, so this is basically about making sure that um, the service providers and uh, that are involved in the project are kind of uh, uh, ready and capable to contribute to, to FAIR, basically. Uh, Maria, I'll let you mention what's happening for Entry FAIR as well. Yes, uh, yes, I listed. Um two work packages related to this uh, work package four on um, called uh, common fair policies so working with um, how to create a homogeneous set of fair data services within the envy fair community and then the other uh, work package five called common requirements uh, and testbed for metadata services uh, working also on these and more from an um, technical aspect, technical point of view. So, um, and I listed a deliverable there from work package five. So yes, that's about it for, for uh, the moment being. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Thanks. I, I'll skip over panels this time and uh, not to put you under pressure again, Abigail. And I know that Isabel isn't here, but S Susanna, are you still there? I think she said she had to leave. Yes, I'm here. I'm really yeah. counting the, the, the second before I leave. I'm sorry. sorry. I'm interviewing someone. Yes, I dropped some note there. Absolutely. We are already connected with the first fair uh, different packages and we're going to follow up uh, as soon as, you know, there is a, a um, the progress on both sides. I have also added in terms of uh, fair sharing already discussed it with a DMP online tool because some DMP online tool user already requested a link to fair sharing. Similarly, it's already connected to uh, f a fair evaluation tools, more than one. Uh, so we are using the content uh, to power the assessment beside working as a registry. So it has these two roles, fair sharing as a registry and powering uh, using the content to power our tools. I have uh, I'll some link the fact that we are already embedded and be used and be recommended by several of EOSC, but not just EOSC projects and reports. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much. And thanks Thank for hanging so on to let us to, to share that. I think um, considering the time, what I'll, what I'll do for the non-priority recommendations, recommendations 16 and 17, is just if somebody has something that they feel a burning urge to share about recommendation 16 or 17, or that's particularly relevant to what's already been discussed from recommendation one, two, and three, if you could just put a comment in the Zoom, in the, in the chat group now, and, and I'll give you the floor for a couple of min minutes. Otherwise, I, I would, yeah. I, just just um, a quick point. I, I see Francois or, or Neil has put in something about um, developing guidance. Um, and certainly, I think that would be something we'd be keen to pick up on. So maybe we can take this forward in a different meeting or? Sure, OK. So hopefully, as well, when the report from this um, series of workshops is, is uh, produced, it becomes a, a Kickstarter for more conversation conversations. Francoise, did you want to comment something as well? Yes, it's just that I, I wrote that in the chat. I think that taking the context into account is absolutely uh, critical. And it's not so easy if you develop generic uh, assessment tools and so on. So there is an, uh, it has been seen on the DMPs that there is a, some need to adapt the DMPs to the disciplinary context. And this is what we just heard. But it's a more general issue and uh, it's not the easiest one to deal with. So it's a bit too bad that it's lost in, uh, in a recommendation which is not in priority. 
And I can say that because I am one of the authors of a, of a report. So it's okay. a bit too bad it's not earlier. Yeah, that's um, uh, that's a that's a really great point. And the apologies that we didn't manage to cover this on the call today. Originally, we had a, um, I think it was a 90-minute time slot, and it got condensed because so many people are overlapping in these sessions uh, that we're trying to 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 wrap it up much more quickly. Uh, mentioning that, I see that the clock is really ticking down. So um, what I'm going to suggest for people, if that's okay, is that for these overall pillar questions. Um, in the in the collaborative notes, you'll see there's an opportunity for you to to give answers or to comment on these. So just to explain the two questions, the first question, uh, what's missing in the recommendations and actions in this pillar? So basically, when we think about this context of defining fair um, and the fair components, and also specifically this point on the fair e ecosystem and what it means to be a fair digital object which are the actions that might be missing, um, what's missing from the recommendations. So in terms of turning fair into reality from the report, thanks Francois, you've mentioned something that you feel is kind of a shortcoming. If people feel like there are other shortcomings from uh, what's been highlighted in, in this pillar, uh, if you could add that into the collaborative notes. And then here, the next question is, any recommendations not addressed? So this is more about the point that we've just discovered, uh, we've just uh, discussed at least these uh, first three recommendations in the pillar and maybe there are uh, some areas there that people just realize now are, are not being touched or that are being touched less at least by the projects that have been involved with this meeting so if you wanted to have a think about that and and, and try and think of some things that you feel like uh, um, aren't um, aren't being covered by any project in the EOSC um, ecosystem or that are not being well covered by projects if you could highlight that as well um, so hopefully you can spend a couple of minutes, if I let you go two minutes early perhaps. Uh, I'll just mention as well in terms of a wrap up, um, the notes for this meeting and the spreadsheet are going to be open for more comments until the end of the day tomorrow. And then this, this will be used as well as any kind of um, information that you might share in the chat of the Zoom call for a report. And, and the report will ultimately feed into a white paper, which the white paper is coming a kind of a long way off, but uh, the report should be ready within the next couple of months before the end of the summer or just afterwards. Um, I'll just also ask before I let you go, if there are kind of any other questions or maybe any other burning points that people would like to raise before we, we break up. No? Okay, in that case, if you could um, spend a, couple, uh, a minute or two just on those questions of what's missing in the recommendations and actions, and then if you feel like there are things that are not being well addressed or if there are gaps in terms of what's going on, uh, and hopefully we continue this conversation either as part of work with the synchronization force or in, in the other fora that, that everybody involved in pillar one activities are, are uh, touching on. Okay, uh, thanks everybody for your, for your time on the call today. Sorry if it was a little bit rushed. Hopefully you still found it useful and um, we'll also uh, share, share the notes and what we've learned with you as soon as possible. Thanks for joining and uh, yeah, see you next time. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.